thing I would say for you guys is when we're looking at orientation, we want to get some ways to classify things. And when we're talking about the um, coordinate grid system, we are, we've already kind of talked about different ways to organize these. And if we were to, if we were going to kind of take a, um, take a triangle and put these, put, take a triangle based on every group had a different angle or a different reference angle, right? Every group had a different triangle based on the quadrant that it was in, or based on where it was at, right? Do you guys agree? Now, how could we classify this? Well, one of the first ways you guys learned how to classify this was by talking about quadrants, right? And this was like, I don't know, seventh, eighth grade, something like that. You guys learned to label the quadrants. And that was just a very easy way of just identifying one quadrant from the other, OK? So the first thing we do, we do is we sometimes would label them. Hey, I want to talk. I want a triangle that's in quadrant one, or we're talking about a quadrant that's in, or an ang or a triangle that's in quadrant two. All right. But now we can also look at some other important things here. If I have the theta, then we know that if here's my reference angle, then I know that this is my opposite side, this is my hypotenuse, and this is my adjacent side. Right, because the adjacent side is always between the angle and your 90 degrees. Opposite is always directly across, and then your hypotenuse is right there. Right. Now, let's think about our six trigonometric functions. Oh, no. Okay. Let's think about our six trigonometric functions of this triangle. All right. If we we're going to do sine of theta prime, that's just going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Right. So we can just write sine of theta prime is opposite over hypotenuse. But rather than dealing with opposite over hypotenuse, why don't we just look at, is that, pos is that going to be a positive or is that going to be a negative? Positive. Opposite is positive. Hypotenuse is positive, right? So we could kind of write a summary statement as sine of theta is greater than 0. What about cosine? Cosine is going to be adjacent, which is positive over hypotenuse. So we could say cosine of theta is greater than 0. And what about tanny? What do you think tanny is? Positive. positive, right? So the first quadrant is kind of boring. Everything's positive, right? Everything's positive. Well, what comes interesting, though, here is if you guys look at this, now we still have opposite. We still have our hypotenuse. But now what happens to our adjacent? Jason is now going to the left, guys, right? So now the adjacent side is negative. That's important because does that change the sign of this reference angle here? Opposite over hypotenuse? Is that still positive or negative? Still positive. But now the cosine of theta is negative adjacent over hypotenuse, which is now going to be n n negative. And tangent of theta prime in here over here is going to be opposite over a negative adjacent, which is now negative. Okay? And then as we move to the third quad, oh, I forgot one more. I was like, I know I'm missing one more thing. To kind of make this also a little bit thing, let's just talk about the coordinate points. Uh, actually, I'll come back to that, I guess. I just kind of skipped ahead. Um, so let's go and look at this. Now, this one is opposite, and we have negative adjacent. So we have a negative adjacent and a negative opposite. So guys, that now makes our sine prime less than 0. I'll move this ahead. Cosine theta less than 0. And our tan of theta prime is less than 0. I'm sorry, tan is greater than 0. Why is it greater than 0? Everything else was negative. But think about it. Op negative tangent is opposite over adjacent. Negative opposite, right, because you're going down. Right, So that's a negative value. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Everybody had different triangles. If you have a negative over a negative, which turns to positive. right? So the tangent is positive. And then we'll go ahead and look in um, this one. So we have now, we have a negative opposite and a positive adjacent. So when we look in the fourth quadrant, our sine of theta prime is going to be less than 0. Our cosine theta prime is going to be greater than 0. 
and our tangent of theta prime is less than 0. Okay. Now, more importantly, the other point that I forgot to go over with you guys, or, or at least to mention, is you guys all graphed points, right? Yes? So let's make a connection with the trig to our coordinate grid system. In the first quadrant, you knew to graph in the first coordinate system because both your x and your y coordinates were both positive. Correct? In the next one, we graph to the left here because the first coordinate was x coordinate was negative and the y coordinate was positive. Over here, we graphed in the third quadrant because the x coordinate was negative and the y coordinate was negative. Right? You guys all did this. I mean, I'm just summarizing this for you. And then over here, for x coordinate was positive, y coordinate was negative. So now, it comes into the important thing. What do we notice about all this? What kind of relationships, what kind of things do we, what kind of patterns do we find? Anything. Door, the, the conversation is completely open. Does anybody notice anything that's kind of interesting in here that maybe we might want to talk about? Yes, Ms. Hannah. They're opposite or diagonal. You mean what? Like what? Like, give me an example of what? Like, are you talking about the points? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the points that you have opposite signs. Like, something is always across. Like, the, across the diagonal, these are positive, positive. These are negative, negative. Right? Something's always flipping signs as you go across x and y axes, or the origin, right? So you have signs flipping. Yes, Anna. Um, the cross is related to the x coordinate. What? Cosine, you're good. Of um, the negative coordinate, of the um, x coordinate is related. It makes sense in my head, I swear. It makes complete sense. And it's the exact thing I want you guys to understand. I need you guys to take this away from here. Before I get to that, before I come to your point, do you guys agree that above the x axis, sine is positive? When you go below the x axis, sine is negative, right? When you go to the right of the y-axis, cosine is always positive. When you go to the left of the y-axis, cosine is negative, right? Tangent is positive, kind of as Sam said, in the diagonal, like in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Tangent is negative in the second and in the fourth quadrant. So if you think about when is sine positive, when is cosine negative, right? Just let's do, si let's do sines and cosines first. I said sine was positive in the first and the second quadrant. What is the only coordinate that's positive, excuse me, positive in the first and the second quadrant? The y coordinate. Hmm, interesting. And, what, and I said cosine. Notice cosine is negative in the second and the third quadrant. Which coordinate is negative in the second and third quadrant? X. So there's some relationship there, right? Don't you guys agree? There's something going on. The cosine and, and sine, they're related to that x coordinate. But the the issue is, or I want you guys to think about this. Do I have it? Yeah, I do. We, let's, do let's go ahead and do this problem. 3 fourths, right? And I said, you know, we said, you know, find the cosine of our theta prime. And what you guys did is you graphed it. And we did 3, 4, and 5. And you said the cosine of theta prime was equal to 3 fifths. Is cosine equal to 3? The x coordinate? Is it? No, no. X is, like, here's x. Here's the y. x is 3. The cosine of theta prime, guys, is 3 fifths. So it's not exactly the same, right? Correct? OK. However, would you guys agree with me that I could rewrite this triangle as a similar triangle? Could I make this triangle in the same respect? Could I, if I created a triangle 10, 8, and 6, is that a similar triangle of 3, 4, 5? Do they have the same ratios? Remember in, remember in geometry, you guys talked about like similarity and dilations? So this triangle has the same ratios. They're similar. Well, if I want to multiply by 2, is it OK then if I just divided by 5 and created a similar triangle? Yes? OK. So why don't we create a similar triangle by dividing by 5? Do, 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 do. Divide by 5 is 1, 4 fifths, 3 fifths. Uh-oh. Is now? 
if you were to kind of think about this as now an x-coordinate, what, what would be the x and y-coordinate of this point? If you were to like graph this, guys, if we were graphing this triangle, what would be the x-coordinate up here? 3 over 5. What would be the y-coordinate? 4 fifths. Is now the cosine of theta prime equal to the x-coordinate? Yes. Yeah, so when is that true? When can we say that the cosine of an angle is actually the exact same value of the x-coordinate? Yes, when the hypotenuse is 1. So that's why, do you guys remember last class period we did the triangle where we got it to be 1? Right? Because that makes life easier for us. If the hypotenuse is not 1, we do trig. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if we can, get, if we can reduce the triangle to a hypotenuse of 1, it, we can, we're still doing adjacent over a hypotenuse. But we don't, like, 3 fifths over 1 is just 3 fifths. So we can just use the x value. We can just use the cosine value. Because you guys see they're related. But they're related, they're exactly related when we have that hypotenuse is equal to 1. Okay? It's a huge, huge concept that we're going to be discussing more next class period. All right? But for right now,